Good morning, you guys. Uh, today is the 18th of December, Monday morning. We are currently westbound on the 60 freeway in Southern California. Uh, we're in Ontario area right now. We just uh, just got on the 60 from I-15 not long ago. Uh, we're going to be making a delivery to the Martin Brower McDonald's facility in City of Industry this morning. We have a 10 o'clock appointment. Yeah, going to be there a little bit closer to the appointment time than I had planned on. And I'm going to tell you about why that is. Because uh, I left, uh, yeah, I went on duty right around 7 a.m. for And it was it's a 60-mile trip from my house to the, the customer. However, I had a sick alert here uh, up down in the Cajon Pass. And that sick alert was caused by a, a truck crash that happened yesterday. Specifically, uh, it was uh, basically a runaway truck, I believe. Uh, it's not confirmed that it's a runaway truck uh, situation, but it more than likely was. Um, what happened is right by right at the southbound Cajon Pass scale. Uh, apparently a truck was on the right shoulder, you know, speeding down, whatever, and now when I passed by this morning, they were trying to, they were still busy recovering it, even though this happened yesterday around midday-ish. That tells you how long that's been going on. And they had, uh, yeah, they had two wreckers over there trying to winch it back up from the, you uh, know, it went basically, a. Uh, Went through the guardrail on the on uh, that's on the southbound uh, way station on ramp, and over the embankment, and basically came to yeah came to rest down there at the bottom of the embankment. Um, as far as I know, the driver of the truck wasn't badly hurt. However, man, and somebody else in a car. Uh, as I recall, got hit by that truck on the way uh, before it crashed. Uh, they weren't badly hurt either. They said they didn't have any uh, like bleeding kind of cuts or whatever, but they were. Um, it's not like they were hurting. I don't know if they had broken bones or just whiplash or whatever. It didn't sound like they were badly hurt though. At least uh, so. Thankfully, it was. Uh, no major injuries, at least it's so it seems. However, again, this uh, this was caused by a truck with uh, possibly bad brakes. You know, I went down that pass last week. You know, my my truck has a lidar unit on it or radar, as you will. So anybody in front of me, you know, if they're within about six or seven hundred feet of me, my unit will you know, will pick them up and actually tell me what their speed is. So like this, uh, the street truck right in front of us, I can tell it's doing 58, now 57. You know, actually kind of wavering between 57 and 59 miles an hour, now 60. Um, last week, I'm going down the pass, and it turned out it had, uh, you know, and I'm doing the speed I'm supposed to be going, about 45-ish. You know, and I had a heavy load too, so I was, uh, yeah, I don't want to be using my brakes going down that hill if I don't need to. So I'm going down it, and I had one truck go flying past me, and then he moved back over soon enough for my LiDAR to pick him up, and he was doing like 78. And then the UPS dry, uh, semi with the 53-foot trailer passes me up, and he moves back over, and he's doing like 70, 71 as well. You know, I... I don't necessarily have an issue with that happening. You know, with driver or truckers going that speed down the pass or driving that speed in California. But know your load. If you're pulling an empty trailer and you can do that kind of speed and uh, not have to touch your brakes, great. But if you're going that speed and uh, you're ha if you need to touch your brakes to maintain your speed, then you probably got a problem. Uh, let me see if I can get slid over. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. This this guy's trailer is not helping me out here. I don't. Come on. Yeah, this Chrysler 300 driver was trying to help me, but this 
guy with a utility trailer, uh, the guy in a utility truck in front of his might not have been so bad if it was just his truck, but the trailer contributed to uh, making it harder for me to get over. Alright, this is a shit situation there. Nobody, nobody's doing anything wrong, it's just a bad situation, really. Alright, anyway, though, yeah, it's a, it, it, you know, we just had an incident last month where a guy was coming down the pass and he ended up in, a, in the runaway truck ramp because, again, he's going too fast. Of course, he goes on Mother Trucker's YouTube channel and tries to claim that he wasn't going too fast and that he had some kind of mechanical failure on his brakes. Well, you should already know better than to rely on your brakes going down a hill. If you're relying on your brakes to go down a hill, then you're already going too fast and uh, you know, your logic's bad anyway. Yeah, you should already be down to a slow enough speed where your jake brakes alone can get the job done. Ideally. Now, back in the day, trucks didn't have jake brakes, and, um, you know, they would come down, you know, those same steep grades, but they would come down at lower speeds as well. Much lower speeds and lower gears, and, uh, you know, the slower you're going, the less heat that your brakes can build up. But when you're doing 70 plus miles an hour down that pass, and using your brakes, you're going to um, you want to heat up your brakes a lot more quickly than you will if you're doing like 40 miles an hour. You might want to keep that in mind, guys. Now I say I see runaway truck issues all the time in that pass. They don't always end up in the runaway truck ramp. Like there was that that one there where and I could tell from the I could see the tire marks that they uh, they swerved from the shoulder, basically right next to where the way station is at. And right when they got to, uh, got past the uh, the fence area, whatever, where they could hop over the island there, in between the, the fence and the, the light pole that's on, uh, you know, on the island there, it separates the way station from the travel lanes. I could see it, they, uh, they swerved over into that area there, and ended up going through the guardrail there that, uh, and off to off down, down the embankment. I know of at least a couple of times I've seen trucks get off the southbound uh, Highway 138 off ramp there, though, and just keep going right on through. And next thing you know, they're uh, um, they're going straight across the road and down the embankment and crashing into the 76 gas station that's right there. I've seen that. I've, I know of that happening twice at least. And I had another time where I was coming through, and there was a, uh, what was it, a double hopper, like, you know, like a Robertson's Ready Mix, double hopper type truck. I, I don't remember if it was Robertson's or somebody else. Yeah, but somebody might hold a uh, cement related stuff or gravel or whatever. They lost their brakes, ended up in the core area for the 138 off ramp. You know, uh, the core area is in between the travel lanes and the off-ramp itself. You know, that triangle area between the overpass, and the off-ramp, and the travel lanes. And then next thing, they, uh, they end up uh, crashing into the embankment there, uh, you know, that goes up toward the overpass for 138. Like, I see it too much. Guys don't, uh, drivers don't have a clue what they're doing with, uh, as far as that's concerned. You know, they don't res they don't they don't respect their equipment or how dangerous it can be to go down uh, go down steep grades. All right, um, so I, that kind of covers that. Uh, I do have another driver who had asked about fuel saving tips and uh, comment on one of my other videos. I'm gonna answer some of those questions. Obviously, buying the cheapest fuel you can, whatever at times can help, but. Uh, the driver was also wanting to know if there are any other little tips that might uh, be useful. So yes, I uh, will go ahead and add some there. I think I already have some of that info in another video uh, from the past, but I'll go ahead and add uh, the information here again. So yes, there, uh, there are tips that I can add in there. So one, generally speaking, the center of the country, uh, Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, that region, usually tends to have the best prices in the entire country. And then from there, 
it doesn't matter which direction you branch out in, whether you're going northwest, southwest, west, east, you know, northeast or southeast, whatever, generally the rule of thumb is uh, the further you get out from the central U.S. and more toward the coast or, or the country borders, expect the fuel prices to get gradually more expensive as you go. Now, California has uh, easily the highest prices in the country. Northeast was getting pretty up there last year also. Um, not going to get into all the politics all that. Let's answer the question, though. Um, yeah, and I'm not, I'm not talking about Biden kind of politics, by the way. Yeah, some of you guys might think that, but um, no. And we, we don't need to go into that topic. Um, just, it is what it is, right? It's, you know, the, get all the pipelines that feed into the central lines there in Oklahoma. And then they, uh, you know, and then everything kind of branches out from there. That's why that region tends to be the cheapest for fuel. You know, it takes, uh, you know, it takes plumbing and miles and all that kind of stuff to get it from that area out to other parts of the country. So that's just, it's just natural. It's going to cost you more to get it, you know, the, the longer distance away from the Oklahoma, Texas, Missouri area. Um, just naturally it costs more to move it. All right, so how can you save money doing that? Knowing this, uh, if you're a lease operator or, or even an owner op buying all your own fuel, my a uh, couple general rules of thumb I have are if I'm going from a cheaper to more expensive area, buy as much fuel as you can. Fill those tanks up as much as you possibly can. You know, because uh, the more, uh, the further out you get, the more expensive it's going to get. So, good example. I can get my fuel in uh, Oklahoma or Texas right now at the 320 to 370-ish range per gallon. But you go to uh, Arizona, like say Western Arizona, and like 1.9 in uh, Yucca is still 395. The Flying Jane in Yucca is uh, 425-ish or something like that right now. So you see it's getting more expensive. Uh, I don't want to buy any more of that fuel and I absolutely have to. So I'm going to max out my tanks earlier and then when I, you know, let's say if I'm coming into California, here's another rule of thumb you can use. Do not follow the rule of thumb that everyone gives of just buy, uh, don't buy any more fuel than is needed for that particular trip. Bad advice guys. That's good advice if you're on a paycheck to paycheck kind of budget and you really need uh, to pinch on every penny, uh, every single paycheck. However, you can actually save yourself more money uh, over, the, over a two or three week period by not doing that. You know, so if you buy just enough fuel to get yourself, you know, to finish a load that's going into California, um, I'm going to go ahead and stay in this lane. We're getting pretty close to my our, our receiver, by the way. Um, we're about at the 57 and 60 interchange here. Uh, but I think that lane is going to uh, end into this lane, if I recall. So we'll stay here for now. Yeah, we're in Diamond Bar now. Um, okay. So if you buy just enough fuel to get you to your receiver, uh, let's say here in Southern Cal... Well, all right, that's great for that load, but how are you going to get back out of California? You're going to have to buy California price fuel, which is over $5 a gallon right now. Why the hell would you want to spend that kind of money when you can buy less than $4 a gallon fuel in Arizona? Now, go ahead, buy more fuel in Arizona if you have to. Now, get you enough to get into California and then uh, back out of California before you have to uh, yeah, have to fuel up again. Now, this is more for lease operators and not so much for owner ops because uh, owner ops, they have to pay if the taxes on their own and uh, there's a little more, it's, yeah, it's a little more complicated because of that. So, keep that in mind. 
but at least operators, at least if you're on the kind of lease contract like I'm on, where you don't pay any if the taxes, the, the carrier pays it for you. Um, I can't, yeah, I, yeah, we're only a mile away from our exit, so I don't want to risk not being able to get off the freeway when I need to be, so I'm going to go ahead and stay, uh, come over here, even if I... I want to say this lane terminates into the number three lane, though. But I usually come from the 57 side, not the 60 side. So I'm, I might be in error here. But we're a mile away from our exit, so I, I just don't want to take a chance of not being able to get to it because I'm camping out over there too long. All right, the other thing, if you're going from a more expensive area to a less expensive area, generally what I do is... Don't ever fuel your tanks up. Only get enough to get you to the next better priced area. And then, uh, you know, and then get, you know, get more fuel there than when you get to the, you know, the, the cheapest areas. Come on, I need over, dude. All right, this Mercedes knows I'm coming over and good, so that helps. But I got one more, got one more uh, plane to come over though, and problem here, these guys probably don't know that I went over. All right, now we got it. I guess I could have used the, you know, stayed in that lane too, but I need this Grand Avenue exit here to. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit of a pain. Uh, the 10 westbound, the, you know, both uh, off ramps from southbound 15 to the 10, both on the eastbound and westbound sides of 10 were, were actually closed for whatever they were doing over there. I think road work of some sort. So that wasn't even an option to me, even if I wanted to go that way. All right, we're gonna make a right turn here. We'll go ahead and use the outermost lane. That way we can make the widest turn and not encroach on any other lane. We're gonna need, we're well, gonna need this side anyway because uh, the very short distance down the road here, we're gonna make a left turn on the Baker Parkway. See, so, yeah, I was able to make that turn. My my trailer did not at any point in time enter in the other turn lanes uh, areas. That's why we use the outermost lane. Now, uh, older school truckers will tell you to always stay in the innermost lane or the rightmost lane, but that's, uh, we don't go by that rule anymore. Not, uh, CDL schools never teach that anymore. Uh, at least I don't know any that teach that way. Uh, older school truckers do that to, uh, they say to protect your blind spot, but you got these things called hood mirrors now. Most of us have them, not everybody does, but most of us do. And they work wonders. There is no blind spot over there as far as that's concerned. And either way, and if you have to approach in the other lane's uh, area to make your turn, and they're also making a turn, and you have a side swipe accident with them, you're the one who's going to get the ticket by the, from the cops, guaranteed. Now, I've heard of it. I know of many cases of this happening. So don't follow people's uh, bullshit advice. Uh, Stand in or uh, the right most lane if you're making those turns. All right, right here, coming down the hills, Baker Parkway. Uh, all right, so we're going to Martin Brower, which is the delivery branch of uh, McDonald's. We're going to end up parking on the street over here, and then we'll walk our bills up to the guard shack. I've been here a number of times before. It's been a while though since I've been here. Um, I, I can't even remember when I was last here. I didn't bother to check my records, but it's probably it, it probably been at least a year since I've been to this place. But I've been, like I said, numerous times. Um, generally, it's not the place for rookie drivers to be uh, doing knockings. Uh, in fact, you used to always have. Uh, um, I don't know if it's still there, but I used to always have a sign telling you that you, uh, you know, that uh, trainees are not allowed to dock at this location, 
And, uh, you know, if there's a trainee, then the trainer has to do the docking for them, even if it's a trainee or not. Even if the trainer is, uh, trainee is the one who's on duty. Because, you know, it gets, it's, it can be on the tight side. It really depends on how many, how many rows of uh, containers or drop trailers, whatever, are parked across the lane now. Alright, I need, uh, normally I go ahead and stop over here on the shoulder. I don't know there's going to be room for me up there, so let me, because that next block up is where we want to stop. But I need to walk my bills up and I might have to do, damn it, this guy's got that green cone there. Yeah, I mean, these guys are screwing me over here with this. Because I don't think I'm going to find parking over there. Uh, I really don't want to park right here, but I don't think I'm going to have... Uh, actually, you know what? I uh, might have room right there in front of Sierra England. Uh, I look like there might be just enough room for me to park in front of Sierra England. I'll give it a try. If not, I might need to... Uh, I might need to park. You know, if this is a cul-de-sac right here, we can get ourselves turned around. But yeah, I, I was able to see just far enough where I believe we can park here in front of England. Yeah, and they got their curtains drawn. Yeah, there's plenty of room here. All right, so let me kick you out. We're going to do a parallel parking here. Okay, I gotta watch that light bulb back there. Wait till our tenants are just about to hit the curb and then we'll kick out this way. Okay. Uh, I think my drives might have just started to hit the curb there, but that's all right. All right, see, we're good. See how easy it is to do parallel parking? <laughs> Some of you guys are like, oh, hell no. That's not, that's freaking, I can't do that for him. No, you just follow the fundamentals. Um, exactly what I was doing there. Um, let's see. We are sitting uh, my arrival call and all that and get our bills checked in and all that. And uh, hope we dock in pretty soon there, right? Talk more about the fundamentals on the way in. All right, guys, we have a dock door assignment. It is 11:12 uh, now. I'm gonna go ahead and creep up. Uh, yeah, the guard just sent me a text message saying I can bring my truck up to the guard shack now. Just kind of creep up at lower speed. Like the other JCT driver who's checking in at the same time as me just got a door assignment also. Alright, so it turned out <coughs> last time I was here was actually four years ago according to my records. I didn't realize it was that long ago because I've been here several times and it didn't seem like it was that many years ago, but apparently it has been. dock in now. Uh, we're going to be docking in at door 21. Uh, slide tandems back, open your doors. And when you get through docking in, bring the paperwork over to door 7, which is right over here. Uh, I got outhouses right over here along the wall right next to that container that's over there. So 
if you need to use the restroom, well, yeah, that'll be the place to be. Yeah, right there is the office. Okay, see, it is uh, a little on the tight side. It's not like Ralph's and Compton tight, but it is on the tight side. That's why I was saying earlier they uh, they don't want rookie drivers uh, docking in here. Uh, 21 should be further down this way somewhere. Or it might be right where this guy's at. I don't know. He might be waiting on me. Or no, it's not. That's uh, oh, it's yeah, it's right next to Stevens. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my doors open. I need to make sure I'm clear of that other truck. Um, actually, slide 10 up to All right, slide them, slide the 10 ups first. Try to be gentle so I don't do any Undo pressure on the mechanical stops. It'd be too rough, and uh, you can actually rip the tandems right off the trailer. All right, so two spots over, which uh, normally uh, it's actually right here, about where I'm at now. It's about when I start normally cutting back over. I used more room than I needed there, actually. Okay, tandems are pretty well positioned, but... I mean, the trailer is pretty well uh, handled as well, but... I'm going to have to come a little bit to, more to the left. I can tell by where the tire marks are at that... I still need to go a little bit left, but I had too much angle there. done unloading here it uh, was pretty quick it's just afternoon right now uh, this guy was gonna set up the back but I think he uh, was a little bit reluctant to go past me without knowing what I had going on or whatever uh, I don't know if he thought maybe I was stocking in or out but yeah he went ahead and let me go by first all right so uh, yeah, no problems here. It was, uh, like I said, fairly quick getting out of, uh, you know, getting unloaded once I was in the door. Uh, the guy we saw out there waiting when I was docking in was, uh, I believe, the same guy who uh, unloaded me. Um, he wasn't the same guy who brought my bills out to me, but but evidently he was uh, the first guy was waiting. Alright, um, I don't, I think they checked the trailer on the way out, so that's why I have the doors open. Yeah. Right, thanks. Okay, let me get up here far enough. I 
and then I'll get my doors shut. Actually, you know what? I can go ahead and come all the way out to the curb, and then I'll, I'll, I'll shut them while we're here at the street. There is a taco truck up here. If I get over there quick enough, because uh, I don't know how long they're going to be there. Maybe I can get me a tree stone egg burrito or something if they have any. <laughs> I sent my empty call and all that. Um, I don't have a pre-plan yet, so I don't really want to leave here just yet. Uh, I see that car coming by now. still need to leave though and leave the area because we're not really supposed to be parked here but it is what it is all right I'm, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this one an A though like I said I don't have a pre-plan yet and um, I'm not into recap hours yet but I'm going to be soon I have 16 hours and five minutes left on my 70 hour clock no recaps back coming uh, coming back tonight um, I don't know that I, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, so, got uh, one more night of no recaps, and then I get 5.43 back tomorrow night, and then 13.04 back the following night, so, should be, you uh, should be definitely uh, no problems working with that, with any, uh, most reloads, so, uh, I don't really anticipate uh, having any problems getting outbound freight it's just a matter of what's available and all that it's not going to be it shouldn't be an issue with my hours at the very least so um all right so i'll just kind of let you guys know what's going on whenever i'm picking up my next load or if it's a colton possibly i'll just wait till i get to the receiving end and let you guys know then right um all right well you all have a great day and uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one